So I got a few hundred more nasty comments from the Simon Dan cult yesterday. And so it didn't take long to realize that he made another video about me. How Simon Dan's hired propaganda army works is beyond me, but it's certainly organized, but it doesn't really bother me. Maybe I'll try to address a few more of Simon Dan's arguments on the Globusters, if others think it's interesting, but I at least wanted to address a couple of Simon Dan's claims. Yes, all of his arguments were silly, but unlike Simon Dan, I don't get a penny for my videos. I don't have any merchandise to sell. I have a career and a family to take care of, and so I don't have all day to make a video response to address all of his nonsense. So, let's start with this one. One other thing. Notice that there is no thrust from the nozzle. Yes, there should have been a huge flame and obvious light source from the nozzle. No, there shouldn't. Here is a short clip from the Vintage Space YouTube channel telling us why. But the lunar module didn't burn the same combination of fuel and oxidizer. Instead, it used hypergolic fuels, or hypergols. Hypergols burn on contact. They don't need an ignition source, which means all you have to do is open a valve, let the two mix, and boom, you're off. Which is great with spaceflight because that's one less thing to worry about. Another characteristic of hypergols is that they typically burn clear. This is the case of the lunar module. Both the lunar module ascent stage and descent stage used a mix of arizine 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, a fuel and an oxidizer that burn on contact with a characteristic clear flame. I do have to commend NASA for using a beautiful propagandist. It's a wonderful change from Simon Dan and it's strangely makes me want to conform. But I guess the truth is more important to me. Even though she's hot, she isn't telling you the truth. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> Anyways, did you notice that she used the words clear flame? For comparison purposes, this is a clear flame produced by burning alcohol. You can still see the flame, but it is rather invisible. So the question is whether the hypergolic fuel mixture of the Apollo 15 and Apollo 17 ascent stages would have burned clear and thus mostly invisible from the remote controlled camera on the moon operated 234,000 miles away. To her credit, she was right about the alleged fuel used by the Lunar Lander movie prop. It was an alleged mixture of dinitrogen, tetroxide, and aerosene 50. It sounds so impressive. But is the flame from the hypergolic propellant invisible, as she claimed? This video comes from the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham, where they recreated the chemical reaction that allowed astronauts to blast free from the moon's gravity. This type of chemical reaction, a hypergolic chemical reaction, was the rocket fuel used in the Apollo program. So as you can see, one of our workshop technicians many years ago has made here at the University of Nottingham's own Apollo spacecraft. And essentially there's a rocket motor and a jet. And opening the switch. Do I really have to point out the obvious here? Does anyone else see the problem? Me. Thank you, Simon Dan. You finally got an answer right. But I'm sure you're about to claim that the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham must have got NASA's method wrong. Well, fortunately, here's another professor in chemistry. So we call it dinitrogen tetroxide. Now we come to the part where we're actually going to put in fuel. Dimethyl hydrazine, which is actually one of the key components of a mixture called Arizine 50, which NASA have used uh, for a very long time to power some of their rockets. Because it gets very hot, it glows so brightly and produces a big brown plume. But my God, this is impressive. Just in case you missed it, let's hear that one more time. Because it gets very hot, it glows so brightly and produces a big brown plume. Both the lunar module ascent stage and descent stage used a mix of aerosene 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, a fuel and an oxidizer that burn on contact with a characteristic clear flame. Clear flame. And produces a big brown plume. Clear flame. I think you need to get your eyes fixed or glasses because you're <laughs> lying through your teeth. 
how well does the Apollo footage match actual experimentation? Yes, there should have been a huge flame and obvious light source from the nozzle. No, there shouldn't. Who thinks Simon Dan is lying to you? Me. Thank you, Simon Dan. For the next argument, I'm just going to play Simon Dan's video. It's that bad. You can clearly see the use of 1960s movie artificial backdrops here. It's obvious. Is it? The backdrop lines are visible throughout all the missions. Are they? In this case, you can even see the carpet used to blend in with the backdrop. No reasonable person can deny that these are movie backdrops. This was not filmed on the moon. Poor exhibit. It seems like you're just saying it's a backdrop without any evidence. Don't worry, Skrull. Now there are plenty of tards out there living really kick-ass lives. I can't help the willfully blind, but I think any reasonable, decent human being can see that this is a poor 1960s movie backdrop, and no goofy propaganda sellout is going to change that fact.